Hi everybody. I uh, haven't done a video, well, a story video, but uh, not um, a project. So this is for Halloween. Um, it can be for anything, but the one you'll see in the store is a Halloween quilt. I want to show you this one. This is one I did for Mark. And oh, there we go. So I just want to show you too, because the other one that I have for Halloween has no borders. But for this, I embroidered designs or wrote things in here with embroidery. And then I did the same size nine patch that I'll show in the demo. And then I went a step further and I put two borders on and this was my leftover um, from my nine patches. So you can use embroidered blocks. I actually did two with embroidered blocks. The other one was went for a raffle. And this one is the one that I recently did. Same idea. So instead of the embroidered block, I just have a big print. So any big print, it doesn't have to be Halloween, obviously. And then we do the nine patch. And so they're not um, structured, you know, like they're not the same here, 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 here. They're all mixed up. And I just like that character. And then I did not put the borders on that I had there. And it is a little bit smaller without the borders. And I think I have one row short. But I think I have one row wide. Anyways, you can do whatever. I'm going to tell you how much I used for this one. And let's go from there. And oh, I did quilting. I did bats. So I just repeated my bats. So there's little bats everywhere. So if you draw out the bat, then it's easier to quilt. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So for this, I'm gonna use this as my. Oh, just the quilt <laughs> fell. This is my fabric that I would use for the nine and a half inch block. And so I start with this, and then I decide what I'm gonna use with that. So I'm just gonna actually move my herbology over here. Um, so I wanna pick a different fabric. So this is a good one, you can see that. That's actually a nice one. And this, and this. And then I picked some reds. I actually went into my uh, Christmas fabric and this was a really good one. It has the green and the red and and the dark, dark brownie red. So I didn't have a lot of green in my stash, so I would have gone to the store and bought some more. Um, for this one, I went from, I'm gonna tell you that you need 0.35 more of one, because I wanted this in more of my blocks. So it shows up more, and that's where my pink came from and my yellow so really a different color for Halloween but super great actually so Chris and I picked out these fabrics yeah so not traditional so you want to pick um, your feature fabric and then you for this size quilt you need seven different fabrics 0.2 I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna hold up what you need and you can either screenshot this video or pause it and write it down. So 1.35 of the big print, and then 0.2 of seven different fabrics, and 0.35 of one you really like. If you don't want to do 0.35 of one you really like, then just buy another 0.2 of two different. So not buying 0.35, then buy nine different fabrics of 0.2. And that gives you a nice variety. You can also, if, you know, buy some new ones and then go into your stash and grab some too, because this is a really good stash buster, as they would say. So I'm just gonna hold this up. So this is what you will need. So 1.35 meters of the big print, 0.2 of seven different coordinating fabrics, 0.35 of one more coordinating fabric, or 0.2 of two different fabrics. Then of the big print, you're gonna cut nine and a half inch blocks. 
and you need 18 of them. And then all other fabrics, the coordinating, you want to cut into three and a half inch strips. So um, you will get four strips out of this and you'll get two out of these. Okay. So that gives you a whole bunch of three and a half inch strips. Okay. Okay. Now, if you want to make it bigger, know that another nine and a half inches, but say, you know, a little bit more to allow for um, cutting, etc. You get four nine and a half inch blocks out of a width of fabric. Does that make sense? So if you want it a little bigger, that's how much you're going to need. Okay. Okay. So I cut these up into point the point twos into a bunch of three and a half inch strips. And then what I do is I actually cut them in half. So I cut this one in half and then this one in half. And what I want to make sure is that when I cut them in half, the first cut is actually like 22 inches because I know I'll get an even amount out of there. And then this one, I might not quite get the same strips out of there. Okay. So 22 inches, usually that works out perfect. So, or even, even 21 and a half. So I think that allows for six of these. Anyways, cut them in half. You have lots of fabric. That's not a big issue to that. And once they're cut in half, I'm just going to cut this one in half because it, it's not. So as you cut them in half, put one in each pile. So I put a brown here, a Christmas here, and I put a blue here, a blue here, this, 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 okay? So they would be equal piles. And then I'm gonna take this pile and I'm gonna sew them into segments. Say like that. So I sew these three together. I sew this one together and I press that way. And then I sew this one together and I press it in the same way. Okay, you could press it this way, but make sure they're all pressed in the same direction. Doesn't matter um, which direction, just make sure that each row is pressed in the same direction. So I just do these randomly. I try to, um, because you'll have two of these, I try to put um, the brown in the middle and maybe a next one over here and not and then the other brown I would put with not these colors so the next time I do it I would sew these three together okay so I don't end up with these same segments a whole bunch of times and I'm just going to show you what I mean so what I did here is I sewed these together so this 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 next time i use this one i made sure that it wasn't with these so now this is in a different and then so this one i do have it over here but it's not next to each other and it's in the side this one is in the middle here but it's on the offset side there and then this one you can see it's not with the same and it's in the middle. So you see how I'm, I'm trying to mix them up? And then this one again, this is on the outside and it's not with these same ones. And then there's another segment. So I put the dark brown now with these two colors. Okay. So when I went to pick up this next segment, I'm just gonna lay these out so you can see better. So here they all are. So I sew those all together and then I cut them up and then I go back to the next group and I do it all again and again I try to mix it up. And I wait till the very end to sew the last maybe six together so that if I see a lot that are the same, I mix it up again. So we're just trying to get a variety and by separating them in two piles, it works well. So when I picked these ones from my new pile, 
I made sure that the red and these weren't with each other. So the red isn't with this brown and the red isn't with this brown and blah, blah, blah. So now this is a whole different look and segment from all these. So these aren't the same. So I hope that makes sense. So once I sew these together, and that's how short they'll be. See, now I would pick uh, this. Okay, so it's with that and that. So I wouldn't put that with it, but I would put it with this. It's not with that there. And I doesn't, it's already been in the middle, it's already been on the side, so it doesn't really matter. And then I put this with it. Because see, the blue hasn't been with it. So that would be my other segment. And then that's totally different too. Okay. Okay. So once I have this done, and I'm going to cut these, and I want to trim this off, I want to make sure the salvages are right off. So I'm going to trim as little as possible. I'm going to get a straight edge. So you can use your square ruler. The square ruler, if this was a plain fabric, I really like doing this because when I cut this, and I like using it a little bit bigger. So see, I, when I cut this off the strip, I went nine and a half like that. So then I cut this and this. So this was a nine and a half inch strip and then I just went and cut it nine and a half. When you use a square ruler, I like using one that's bigger so I can clearly see that line, the nine and a half. When you're, if it was a 10 and a half square, it's a lot harder to see if that's on the line. So I always like using a ruler that's a little bigger because then I can really see, okay? So you can use the same ruler to cut these segments and I just do that. Or you can use one of these if you use the eight and a half inch wide, remember that half inch, I always like to put it on this side so that when I'm cutting them, I don't get that mixed up. So see if I'm cutting them often, I go one, two, three, and then I cut here. Well, now that's four inches and not three and a half. That's just me, but it's a mistake I learned not to make anymore. Or this is actually the one I really like to use for this because it's the smallest and easier to handle. So I would trim this off. And I'm gonna line up some of these. Trim as little as possible. I just buried my rotary cutter. And then I'm gonna flip it. And then I'd start cutting the three and a half inch segments. So I'm gonna line that up there. And line that up there there and then I'm gonna cut and then I cut these all like that this is also a great time to use your serpology ruler remember support this when you're carrying it so I'm just gonna line this up and then what you want to do I did cut this straight so I'm gonna start like that I'm just gonna bump it I push it down I can see Feel it bump so it's at the zero so I just go along and cut three and a half if it's not you just want to like if you haven't done that first initial trim you're just gonna line this all up that's good and then I would just trim that little piece off and then to do your math it's fairly easy so there and then I'm gonna go three and a half and then three and a half and three and a half is seven. And seven plus three and a half is ten and a half. And then ten and a half plus three and a half is fourteen. And then fourteen plus three and a half is seventeen. Okay. Did I say that right? Fourteen is seventeen and a half. Sorry. Okay. So then I lift this up. that away and there's my segments okay so notice I grab my big 60 millimeter I love to use that with the uh, stripology 
that was the biggest thing that made it easy for me. Tab told me, yep, get your 60. And you know, although I have like a gazillion rotary cutters, I was hesitant to get a big one. I have no idea why. Okay, so now I have all these and I'm gonna pile them up and then I'm gonna bring them all to my sewing table and I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna grab this one and I'm gonna sew them together. And now I might not grab those together because of the red, so I might grab these together and I'm gonna sew them together. Now, what I want you to look at is these are all pressed this way. So I'm gonna switch this around so that when I sew these together, see that's my ditch side, my low side, they're gonna butt together really nicely. So when I sew them, I start at the beginning and then when I get here, I don't know if you see that, but there's a little gap there and I don't want that gap. So I actually butt these right up. So I actually just pull that and drag it. And now that's butted up. So when I sew over that seam, it's gonna be nice and close. And then I'm gonna start sewing again. And then I'm gonna make sure this butts up. And that's why I'm pressing the seams in different directions. So it doesn't really, because these are all mixed and match, then I'm gonna grab my next one and let's see, I probably wanna go with this because I don't have any of these colors here. It would not be an issue to use this one. Oh, I got a little left over there. If you get to the end and you have, you don't wanna put this one like this because then it looks too similar. If you get to the end and you, this is the only thing that you have left, all you're gonna do is take this one and repress these seams the other way so you can butt them up. Okay, but I'm not there. I can do this one and these seams like that will butt up nicely. So again, if it, they weren't going in the different direction, I just flip it. So again, I'd sew these together, make sure that's butt up and then flip it. And then that would be a block. And then maybe I do these together and hmm, this together. I'd have these. So. And then I'd have to flip this one. Oh, it's actually in the right direction. That's a different direction. Yep. So that would be one block too. So see how I just do a mosh pit and I just like I, I even when I'm at the table I just throw them like this. And then when I get closer to the end I just make sure I have variety in the last few. Okay. Now, if you're using scraps, like I only have a little bit about a little bit of this one, but this is actually in a light color in there. So I just used it in a few blocks, right? So if you're using scraps, that's okay. So now I have these blocks and you can see how nice they join pretty good with, right? That one could be better, but it's, it's I'm pretty good. And this is a Christmas one and it even has sparkle, but you know, when you get, it doesn't really matter, does it? Now these are gonna alternate. So I would put them on my design wall and I'd alternate them. So I'd have one row like this and then I would sew a row together and then a row together and I'm pressing one row this way and one row that way, okay? And that's it. So you can use your scraps. You can use your scraps or new fabric, or you can go in and just pick one big fabric and pick coordinates with it. Or if you have a big fabric at home, big print that you didn't know what to do with, this is a great project. So yeah. Now, the other thing I was thinking of is if you had leftovers and you didn't want to make, you can do like just two in between and you could do a little runner and then you could just do two more in between and a little runner. Now if you wanted to do a border like I did on the dinosaur one 
you'd make extra of these. So get another one for one more strip of each fabric. And I just sew them together like that. And that creates your border. With the dinosaur, if you're gonna do that, you do need to have, so I, there's my nine patch and I put a border here and then this and then a border. And it doesn't have to be this big, but a little bit because this, you don't wanna have to worry about this blending in with this, right? So because they're all the same, if I did that, you know, you don't want this to run into this. You want a stop of, of this, if that makes sense. Oh, and there's Dublin. We almost made it without you. And whiny. They're getting old and a little whiny. <laughs> okay, where's your brother? He's a little blind, isn't he? And you're a little deaf. So you get his share, we'll give him one. There you go. Good boy. So, oh, Halloween. There you go. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody.